हेलो फ्रेंड्स माय सेल्फ गणेशराम अरुण गिरनार फ्रॉम आर सी पटेल इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ फार्मेसी शिरपुर टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू सी अ टॉपिक व्हिच इन्वॉल्व इन द सब्जेक्ट फार्मास्यूटिकल केमिस्ट्री वन एंड नेम ऑफ टॉपिक इज टॉपिकल एजेंट्स नाउ वी विल सी इन डिटेल ऑल थिंग्स व्हिच आर रिलेटेड विद दिस टॉपिक first definition of topical agent was uh, exactly it means the topical agents or you can say the drugs these are nothing but which are used on the skin surface or mucous membrane called as topical agent we are going to see some inorganic compounds which are used as a topical agents simply you can say the substance which we can apply on the skin or external surface of our body or you can say on mucous membrane that substance can be called as topical agent like different creams powders and many more compounds now we will see classification of this topical agent first in that topical agent can be classified into four different types first is protective and adsorbent example that is talc titanium dioxide second class of this topical agent is nothing but antimicrobial agents in that examples can be say like boric acid iodine third class that is astringent example of this class is alum and last class is miscellaneous compounds means if this is the class uh, we can say no one compound can cover in above three class so we can put that compound in this miscellaneous that is very different class okay the examples which comes in the miscellaneous category that is different sulfur compounds now we will see each and every class in detail in that first we will discuss protectives and adsorbents as the name suggests protectives these are nothing but these are the agents which covers and protect the skin from irritant material means just they form a protective layer on our body or skin surface by forming one coat they can protect our body from different irritant materials which are present in surrounding second class the uh, the second point in the same class that is the adsorbents adsorbents these are nothing but the agents which adsorb polluted material gases and toxins and protects the skin protectives and adsorbents both can be combined means protective and adsorbents are the some substance which forms a protective layer as well as that substance also adsorbs some toxic material so that our skin remains free from this all toxic material example in this class are nothing but calamine and talc many more examples are there simply you can say that protectives and adsorbents these are the compounds which forms a protective layer as well as adsorbs some polluted material gases and by which our skin get protected second very important class that is the antimicrobial agent the drugs which are used to kill or prevent the growth of microorganisms are called as antimicrobial agents antimicrobial agents we will see in detail but before that we will see some terms which are related with the antimicrobials in that first term that is antiseptic a chemical agent which kills or prevents the growth of microorganism on living tissue called as antiseptic second definition disinfectant a chemical agent which kills or prevents the growth of microorganism on non living things inanimate objects like instruments equipments etc are called as disinfectant means if you say antiseptic and disinfectant both are the compounds which can kill the microorganisms or which can prevent the growth of microorganism the basic difference is only one that antiseptic kills the microorganisms on living tissues and second disinfectant kills the microorganism on non living things the only one difference between this antiseptic as well as disinfectant the next term that is bactericide a chemical agent which kills the bacteria because side means 
it is nothing but the killing. So bactericide which kills the bacteria, microbicide which kills the microorganism, fungicides which kills the fungus growth or fungal growth. So simply side that is nothing but killing and the second next term that is bacteriostatic a chemical agents which prevents the growth of bacteria. Here static means prevention of the growth. So bacteriostatic which prevents the growth of bacteria, microbiostatic which prevents the growth of bacteria. So side as well as static both are the different terms. Side means killing and static means prevention of growth. Next to that now we will see how the antimicrobials act or you can say mechanism of the antimicrobials okay so there are three different mechanisms of antimicrobials means antimicrobial can kill the microorganism by three different mechanism first by the oxidation of that microbial protein second is halogenation of microbial protein and last one is the precipitation of the microbial protein now we will see each mechanism in detail in that first oxidation of microbial protein it includes compounds which liberates the oxygen and cause oxidation of the microbial protein sulfhydryl bond which gets oxidized and converts into the disulfide bond so the normal structure of protein in microorganism changes into oxidized protein and this protein deficiency kills the microorganism as you can see in this reaction SH that is nothing but the sulfhydryl bond which is present in the normal protein of microorganism. But when we use this any compound which cause the oxidation that sulfhydryl bond converts into the disulfide bond because of the oxidation. The compounds like hydrogen peroxide, potassium permanganate, uh, if you know the structure of hydrogen peroxide that is H2O2, potassium permanganate that is KMNO4, so it contains oxygen and that oxygen cause this SH bond or this SH bond is uh, SH bond is converted or oxidized into the SS that is disulfide bond. So the normal protein of that microorganism converted into the oxidized protein and so that there is a deficiency of this normal protein and because of this deficiency of normal protein there is a death of that microorganism happens. So this is the mechanism of oxidation of the microbial protein and the compounds that is hydrogen peroxide as well as potassium permanganate can cause the oxidation and kill the microorganisms. Second mechanism of antimicrobial that is halogenation mechanism. Second class for antimicrobial agent is halogenation mechanism. In this class halogen like chlorine, bromine, iodine containing the compounds can be used which cause halogenation of protein of the microorganism and it kills the microorganism. The mechanism is that halogen molecule liberated from halogenated compounds and it reacts with the microbial protein in which halogen atom replace the hydrogen of microbial protein. So the normal protein structure converts into the halogenated protein which is not required to the microorganism. Again here there is a deficiency of the normal protein because all normal protein now get halogenized. So microorganism could not get the normal protein and this normal protein deficiency leads the death of microorganism. Example of this halogenation mechanism that is different compounds like chlorinated lime as well as iodine. The iodine as well as chlorinated lime it contains the halogen like iodine chlorine. It is liberated from that compound then it reacts with the protein of that microorganism it causes halogenation of the normal protein and so that death of microorganism can happen. Third mechanism of the antimicrobial is protein precipitation. Again in this category metal containing compounds react with the microbial protein and which cause the protein precipitation or denaturation of protein which leads to the protein deficiency in microorganism which cause death of microorganism because many metal have the property it cause the astringent nature 
and so that it cause the precipitation of protein so metals like uh, different like boric acid silver nitrate mercury compounds it contains the different metals like silver mercury as well as boron so this metal reacts with the protein of that microorganism it causes the precipitation you can say the breakdown of that protein and it leads the deficiency of protein and so there is a death of that microorganism the mechanism that is simple metal why it happens because metal has now the strong positive charge and it forms complex with the amino group of the protein of that microorganism and so that there is a breakdown of protein what we can say that is the denaturation of protein happens and it can cause the death of microorganism so simple reaction is there that is any metal ion like silver zinc it reacts with the protein of the microorganism it causes the breakdown that is the denaturation of that protein of microorganism and so that metal protein complex forms and finally death of that microorganism occurs some compounds like boric acid silver nitrate mercury compound shows the same mechanism shows the same death of microorganism by this same mechanism so these are the three different mechanisms which are very important which are comes in the category or comes in the second class that is the antimicrobial class three mechanisms are nothing but again first is the oxidation of microbial protein second is the halogenation of microbial protein and third one is the precipitation of the microbial protein now the next class of topical agent that is the astringent again these are the compounds which cause protein precipitation by coagulation when they are applied topically just before in second class precipitation of protein we have seen but in that class precipitation of microbial protein occurs and in this third astringent class the precipitation of human protein can occur so example of this class or astringent is the a alum astringent compound shows different activities or you can say they can act by different mechanisms and these are the four different actions shown by the astringent compound first is the streptic action it is nothing but bleeding is stopped by coagulation of blood and construction of the small blood capillaries uh, the best example is the alum when we can apply alum at any site where the bleeding is occurring so bleeding can be stopped by the same mechanism that is coagulation of blood as well as constriction of the blood capillaries second action uh, shown by the astringent compound that is the anti inflammatory action in this uh, uh, astringent compounds decreases the supply of blood towards the inflamed tissue so automatically inflammation get reduced and it shows the anti inflammatory action third is the anti -pers uh, perspirant action in that sweating is decreased by reducing the pore size of skin when we apply the astringent compound on our skin that time it reduces the pore size of the skin so that automatically sweating is reduced and last action shown by the astringent compound that is the antimicrobial action which just we have discussed in the second class in the protein precipitation so antimicrobial shows by protein precipitation action so these are the four different actions shown by the astringent compounds and generally the compounds which contains metal they are show these all actions that is the astringent action example is the alum and the last class of this topical agent that is miscellaneous compounds it contains the different compounds which does not come in any class which we have discussed earlier okay so it contains uh, different compounds which shows the very different properties so they are come in the sec uh, last class that is the miscellaneous class or miscellaneous compound an example of this miscellaneous compound is sulfur as well as selenium sulfide in this chapter we have seen just theoretical uh, part it contains many properties as well as chemical properties physical properties and uses of these all compounds that we will discuss in the next part thank you thank you very much